Hey, seventh graders, Mr. Hansen here with the next math video for you. COVID style, so I'm doing this actually from my house. All right, today we're talking about order of operations. Okay, so what is the order of operations? Well, it's the rules to follow when simplifying an expression that contains multiple operations. All right, there are rules we have to follow when we're solving problems that maybe has addition, subtraction, multiplying, maybe an exponent, maybe it's got parentheses with an operation inside there or absolute value. There's rules to follow in order to get the correct answer. Because if you don't follow the rules right, you're going to get multiple different answers and you're going to wonder which one is actually correct. All right. So we follow this rule, which we call PEMDAS. All right. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, maybe your teachers have said before. But what it stands for is P stands for parentheses and other grouping symbols. Now that includes braces, <coughs> brackets. It includes absolute value that we just learned about with integers, all right? And anything that's grouped together, which means if there's an operation where it says parentheses five plus two, and then it says times five, you have to do five plus two inside the parentheses first before you can multiply by five. The next step <coughs> or rule to follow is E, which stands for exponents and radicals. That includes our square roots, cube roots, Anything that has the radical sign that looks like a check mark with a line over top of the number. All right. Then we go to multiply and divide in that order from left to right. So I don't always multiply first. I could divide first if it's the first thing I see on the left. Just like we read a book, left to right. All right. And then the last two are add and subtract again from left to right, which means if subtraction is before addition left to right, I would subtract then add. Okay. Keep in mind that we are dealing with integers. We are dealing with rational numbers, which means decimals and fractions. So we got to be able to use both. Now, what's great about this is that you can use your calculators. Okay. So I can use my calculator when I'm solving these to get the correct answer. Huge, huge, important announcement about that though. Do not type the entire expression in, in your calculator and just hit enter expecting to get the right answer if you don't type it in a specific way it's going to give you the wrong answer okay just like we talked about when i showed you the video with fractions if i don't do it the right way it's going to give me a syntax error or it's going to give me the incorrect answer that's not what we want so i'm just going to use my calculator for exponents for maybe multiplying maybe adding and subtracting integers because i still struggle with that a little bit but i'm not typing in the entire expression on my calculator all right so here we go. Let's get to example one. I'm going to zoom in for you guys so you guys can see that a little better. So it says to evaluate the expression. Now the word evaluate means to solve or find the value of. So don't let that big word evaluate confuse you. We're just going to try to find the value of this expression, which is 7 plus 54 divided by 3 times. That means multiply when you see them next to each other with just a parentheses around one number. 2. Okay, so 7 plus 54 divided by 3 times 2. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to go through my list up here. Do I have any parentheses? Well, yes, I do, but do you see any operation inside there? No. If it's just the parentheses around a single number, that doesn't count. The next thing I'm looking for is exponents. Do I have any exponents or radical signs? <clears throat> In example 1, no, I do not. So then I jump down to multiply and divide from left to right. So if I scan from left to right, I'm actually going to divide 54 by 3, then multiply by 2. So what I like to do to show my work is I'm going to put a little <coughs> line there that arrows down showing that, hey, I'm going to do 54 divided by 3 first. Okay, I'm actually going to make my dot a little bit smaller there so that it's neater. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm doing 54 divided by 3 first. Now again, you can use your calculator to help you if you need to. Okay, so if I need to, I can go out of this real quick, find my calculator that I already put on my iPad. All right, remember if you do this, you have to hit the start button twice, click on your calculator, and now I can say, okay, 54 divided by 3, enter. Oh, that's 18. So now, I can, right, so now I can go back and I can rewrite this as 7 plus, no longer is I'm going to 54 divided by 3 because we found out that's 18, plus 18 
times 2. <clears throat> All right. So now I have 7 plus 18 times 2. Now I'm going to multiply 18 times 2 because that comes before addition. I have two operations left, adding and multiplying. Multiply first. So again, I can use my calculator to do 18 times 2. Well, I know that 2 times 10 is 20. 2 times 8 is 16. 20 and 16 make 36. And now I'm going to add 7 and 36 together, which gives me a total of... 43. So this expression had a value of 43. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Example 2. Now I have the expression 48 divided by parentheses 2 to the 5th power, there's your exponent, minus 29 in the parentheses still, plus 6 squared. So there's a lot more operations going on. We have division, we have two different exponents, and we have subtraction and addition. Alright, but keep in mind, we have to do everything inside this parentheses first. So right here, I have to evaluate everything inside here first. So what do I evaluate inside the parentheses? Do I subtract or do I do my exponents? I follow the rules. Exponents would come first. So I need to do 2 to the 5th power. Now again, I can move over to my calculator here and type in 2 exponent 5, enter, and I know, okay, that's 32. All right? So now... I go back here and I write 32, my pen would work, there it goes, minus 29, <clears throat> and notice I still have my parentheses, all right? Now, it's important to rewrite this so you don't forget anything or you don't make a silly mistake, which is why I rewrite it every time, even though this division symbol is sloppy, I'll rewrite that, so that's meter, divide, Parentheses, 32. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now I sell parentheses, so I still need to subtract 32 by 29. So I rewrite this as still 48 divided by 32 minus 29 is 3 plus 6 squared. Now I have division, addition, and exponents. Next one is exponents. So I still haven't divided yet. 48 divided by 3. Plus, I know that 6 times 6, or 6 times itself, is 36. Now I have two operations left, division and addition. I divide first, so again, if I need to use my calculator, I can go back to it, type in 48 divided by, whoops, not 2, 3, which gives me 16. And now I'm going to add 16 and 36 together. This is my final step. So I'm adding these two together. I know that 36 plus 10 is 46. Add six more gives me 52. All right. Example three. We have parentheses 9 minus 2 being raised to the second power. So we have to subtract, then use the exponent of the second power. Minus, we have absolute value now. The absolute value of 3 minus 17. So just like we learned with absolute value before, we have to perform the operation inside the absolute value before we can do anything else. And don't forget, absolute value is always positive. And then I'm adding 4 at the end. All right, so here we go. I can do both these right away because they're both grouping. One's parentheses, one's absolute value. So I'm going to do both right away. And once you get the hang of it, if you can do I mean, both exponents at the same time or do both multiplied at the same time on one side and the other, go ahead and do that as long as you got the hang of it. So I'm going to do 9 minus 2, which gives me 7, and I still have the exponent of 2, minus the absolute value of 3 minus 17. Well, there's your integer problem. I'm going to do 17 minus 3, which is 14, but since it was 17 was negative, it's a negative 14 inside the absolute value, plus 4. Now I'm going to do my exponents and my absolute value at the same time. So 7 squared is 49. Minus the absolute value of a negative 14 is actually positive 14 because it's always positive plus 4. So now I have added and subtracting, I do it left to right. So I'm going to subtract 49 by 14 first. 9 minus 4 is 5, 4 minus 1 is 3. So that gives me 35 plus 4, which is 39. There we go. Example 4. <clears throat> now we have a radical sign. 7 plus, parentheses, 53 minus 3 to the 4th power, divided by the absolute value of 16, or excuse me, not the absolute value, 
the square root, excuse me, of 16. It's the square root, radical side. All right, so again, I'm going to perform everything inside this parentheses first, and then I can also do the square root as well. So I rewrite this as 70 plus parentheses 53 minus, I need to know what 3 to the 4th power is. So I'm going to pull up my calculator. I'm going to dual screen it here. Slide my calculator over so I can see. 3 to the oops, 4th power gives me 81. So now I'm going to go back here and write 81 divided by the square root of 16. Again, I can use my calculator to do that if I need to. So remember to use your calculator for the square root. It's the second green key, then the X2 key on this calculator. I type in 16, enter, gives me the value of four. All right, <clears throat> so now I have seven plus 53 minus 81 divided by four. Still have parentheses, so I still need to subtract inside here first. So I can use my calculator for that. 53 minus 81 gives me negative 28. So I have 7 plus negative 28 divided by 4. I'm going to divide before I add. Don't make the mistake. You can't just always go left to right. I'm dividing before I add. So I'm actually going to divide these two. So now I have 7 plus negative 28 divided by a positive 4 gives me negative seven. Now hopefully you remember that when you add opposites, they give you zero. So seven plus its opposite, which is negative seven, cancels out to give us zero. All right? <clears throat> Couple more examples. Now, <clears throat> you're gonna see order of operations stacked as a fraction like this. Don't freak out. You're just gonna evaluate the top half first, the bottom half second, and then that fraction bar means division, so then we're going to divide it all at the end, okay? So I'm going to evaluate this entire top part first. 4 squared I know is 4 times 4, which is 16, times 6 minus 3 times 6, divided by 11 minus 25, divided by 5, all right? So I'm going to do 16 times 6 using my calculator, which is 96, I know that three times six is 18. So I'm gonna rewrite this as 96 minus 18. Down here, I'm actually gonna divide. So I'm gonna rewrite this as 11 minus five, or 25 divided by five is five. So now I'm just gonna subtract the top, subtract the bottom, then I can divide them at the end. So 96, take away 18, gives me 78. 11 minus 5 is 6. Now I'm going to try to divide those to see if I can get a whole number. 78 divided by 6, and it does, which is my answer of 13. All right, so again, you just evaluate the top, the bottom, then divide at the end. Last example, here we go. 2 to the 7th power minus 5 in parentheses minus 2 raised to the 3rd power plus 3 all over 12 minus 7 times 2. So 2 to the 7th power on my calculator is 128. I know that 5 minus 2 is 3, so that's minus 3, and that's raised to the 3rd power plus 3. 3 to the 3rd power is 27, so I'm doing 128 minus 27, which is 101, plus 3, which gives me 104. So 104 is what's on top. All right? I know that 7 times 2 here is 14, so 12 minus 14 is going to give me a negative number, which is negative 2. So now I have 104 over negative 2, so I'm going to do 104 divided by negative 2, which gives me my value of negative 52. All right, there you have it. That's order of operations. Make sure you get these six examples down in your notes. We're going to do some practice problems together. That's it for this video, COVID Home Edition. We'll see you next time. <music>